Listen to the rhythm of the pouring rain. Hi folks, and welcome back to a very wet Terra Firmacraft TNG playthrough. So we're going to go chasing down some copper mines today, but before we do that, I want to put a little back door into my uh, hovel here. Oh yeah, one more. Just so if I'm trying to escape some nasty critter and I lead it into my pond, I can uh, duck back into my house. There we go. And one other thing to take care of. In the previous episode, I mislabeled this row of squash, so I immediately went back and corrected it by mislabeling it yellow pepper. It should actually be... Maze. Okay. So what we want to do today is, let's have a look at, uh, yeah, the ores, good. Let's scroll out a bit here. So we have some exposed copper uh, areas we found that we can mine directly. So there's one up there, one here, and this one we looked at in the previous episode and we saw that it was regular quality um, copper which is 25 units of copper per mined uh, piece of ore. So we're going to check these two and see if we can find one that's rich, because if we can find a rich vein, that'll mean less effort for us to uh, get more copper. And if those don't work out, then we'll take a stab at uh, searching this guy here, trying to find the deposit for him and see if it's rich. And if none of that works out, then we'll just use you know, this regular deposit over here, I guess, or whichever one's closest. So let's start out by checking this guy up here. Let's see what he has to say for himself. And unless something exciting happens, well, let's first check just to see if we have any berries. Nope, no berries. Okay, so I'm going to head over to this copper deposit. I'll bring you in when I get there. See you shortly. And here we are. Let's have a look see here to see what we've got. Hmm. Oh, oh I've got a shovel. Good. Have a spare in reserve. And it is oh no, it's the exact opposite of Rich, it's a poor native copper, so you can see it's 15 units of copper. That's only like five better than the nuggets we find lying on the ground. Oh, well, I'll grab a few while I'm here, just because sometimes we have to, especially when we start mixing up bronze alloys and that, we sometimes need to come up with odd numbers of units to mix into the alloy, so it's always good to have, you know, sort of different denominations, as it were. A few different ones, so we'll grab a few of these. Oh yeah, I, I guess I should explain something else that's uh, that's uh, special about Terra Firmacraft. It applies both to the TNG and the old version, and that is cave-ins. So when you're mining, there, why am I having problems here? There we go. So when you're mining. The rock above you can cave in if it's unsupported. And now, now that that wasn't a cave in. That was just there was a dirt block above the one I removed, so it fell down. But uh, I the right now I'm mining these ore blocks. Ore blocks 
mining an ore block won't trigger a cave in. But mining a regular block will. Uh, it's probably dirt above this guy too. Yeah. Let's get rid of his dirt. I'll see if I can demonstrate that, but sometimes it isn't uh, it isn't very cooperative. <laughs> you only get cave-ins when you're not trying to get them. Ah, dirt again. Okay, that should be enough for any need we might have for them in the future. Okay, I guess I can start by demonstrating how it works. Or demonstrating one of the bad aspects. I mean, obviously, if you have something cave in on you, it can hurt you. But more than that, it can also destroy the ore that you've worked so hard for. So... Let's put a block there. So you see that there's a block of ore here. If I put dirt here, the dirt will obey the gravity and it will slide off and drop onto that ore block. And it destroys it. So that's the other reason that you don't want to have cave-ins is because you can end up losing a bunch of ore that way. So, um... All right. I'll do a couple of wax here and see if I can trigger one. There we go. And the noise always gets to me. Yeah, so that's what you want to avoid. I mean, obviously the rocks can do you some damage when they hit you, but even worse, you can end up, if, there's, if enough of them fall down around you, you can end up trapped under them. And you'll smother to death before you can uh, use your pickaxe to get yourself out. But anyway, so we don't really want this, deposit, this poor deposit here. But what we can do is at least indicate it. And while we're at it, I guess I should mark this one as being a regular deposit. Okay, so we'll head down to this guy over here and check him out next. And unless something extraordinarily exciting happens, I'll bring you back in when I get there. Oh, nice. Nice. All right. Um, okay, so uh, when I'm traveling, you know, sort of the same route over and over again, I try and switch it up a little bit so I cover slightly different terrain each time, just in case I'm missing something. And this is a perfect example of that. Uh, this right here is, or let me, um, oh, I can just pick it up right now and show you. It's Cassiterite, which gives you tin. And tin is what we need to mix with copper to make bronze, which is our next tier of metal. So, and where this is, uh, well, we'll just, uh, I don't want to put dirt on it. Oh, I have some cobble. Great. There, just to mark the spot. And I've just passed by my home, which is, yeah, you can see it right down there. So that close. And this is the first time seeing it, so. Oh yeah, there's more of it right there too. Awesome. What the heck is that? What is that? I haven't seen that kind of bird before. Is that supposed to be a quail, or is it a baby pheasant? I'm really not sure. Anyway, so I'm heading for uh, that sea there. So I'll bring in when, I'm, when I get there. As I'm swinging my way over there, I noticed some green up there that looks to me like cabbage. I think I'll make my way up there and have a look-see, if I can, that's the best, 
Uh-oh. There is something up there. Maybe I won't take a look right now. We'll save that for another time. Maybe I can get at it from this side. That hurt. <laughs> Let's see if this is, yeah, okay. So I won't search them all out right now, but you can see another one there. Those are cabbages. That was even closer. something that considers me dinner very nearby so I think I will uh, just leave it for now come back at a later time when I'm better prepared to defend myself but yeah so those cabbages weren't ripe yet anyway so we'll come back when they when they are should eat something Yeah, I know that being low on water slows you down. I'm not sure if being low on food does or not. Probably does. Okay, so we can see we've got our deposit there. And as I demonstrated at the other site, we don't want dirt falling down on top. So let's get rid of some of this dirt up here. And this third time the charm. Oh yes, yes indeed. I can already tell because it's bigger. 35 units for each one mine. That's way better. It's twice as good as the poor, right? Okay, we're in business. Um, I have some logs, but not very many. So in TFC, you can make these uh, uh, beams and beams and posts, or beams and pillars, I'm not sure what they're called. And they're specifically intended for mining, for like, you know, holding things up while you mine. But they're pretty expensive to make, and I find that logs do the same job just fine, so... All I do is... Since you can only have a cave-in when it's unsupported, I just stick a log into a hole to make sure that the blocks above are supported. Yeah, that wasn't a cave in there. Just dirt falling again. Now, one thing that I noticed has changed from uh, from the old TFC to TNG. You can mine out stone blocks, and if you use a chisel on them first, we'll get into more detail on this later. But anyway, you can create smooth stone blocks, and I used to. Well, I still do use smooth stone blocks a lot for building more permanent structures, and so I just carry a bunch of those around with me and I'd use them for support instead of wood just because you know I was mining a lot of smooth stone blocks anyway but now smooth stone blocks won't provide that support anymore so they changed that for some reason maybe they felt this was all too cheaty doesn't feel cheaty to me
you got something up there supporting it. So, speaking of supports, get those all in place. Yeah, frequently, well, you know, when you get these um, these veins or ore deposits near the surface, they'll be right at the surface all over the place. You know, like you'll see them popping up all along there, and you'll dig the dirt back on top and find more of it. And so when that happens, it can make sense to just basically strip mine from the top down, and then you don't have to worry about cave-ins at all. But... In this case, that's a lot of extra rock I have to remove, so I think I'm just going to mine it down normally. Okay, um, well, this is going to take me a long time, probably a couple of in-game days to get a good load of this mined out, so the what I will do is demonstrate to you my typical mining method where I'm trying to like bore a, an exploratory tunnel into the into a rock face. So it basically works like this. So I take this rock out, no problem, nothing was going to collapse because there was no unsupported rocks. Future my knife here, uh, what I just said there was incorrect. You can also trigger a cave-in if the block that you're mining will leave an unsupported block above it. So the block that I just mined there could have caused a cave-in. Now, back to our main feature. But now this one here is unsupported, so I take it out next. And even though it's the rock I'm taking out, there you go, got a cave-in. So it, it tri even though it's the rock you're taking out, the unsupported rock can still cause a cave in. But anyway, then I but it, but it didn't hit me, you know, because I'm standing underneath that log. So then I take out to the limit of what my axe can reach, throw in the supports, and now I can mine out what's underneath in safety. Now, the way the uh, cave-ins get triggered is they get triggered by a block being mined at or below the level of, of some nearby unsupported block. Or at least that's how, it, again, I should say that's how it used to be. I haven't played enough of TNG to know if it's the case. So if, for example, I mined that block up there, there would be no cave-ins because any unsupported blocks are down over here. Well, I mean, right now I don't have any anyway, but typically that's where they would be, is where I'm mining. Um, again, that may have changed. I'll find out at some point in time. Uh, but, so this is, like I say, I can get cave-ins here. That's fairly safe. The only time it's unsafe is if, unbeknownst to me, there is like, say, just beyond this wall of rock here, there is an, an, a, you know, a cavern or crevasse or some empty area with unsupported rock not too far, not too far away. And then that'll collapse. And then if there's an, uh, an empty area beneath me down here, then that could collapse and then I could fall down. So that's the main, main threat of my way of mining. But honestly, you're going to, Unless you're really careful, you're going to run into the same thing using the, uh, the posted beams that TFC expects you to use for mining. So that's all the wisdom I have to impart on this. So just a bunch of grinding. Got to go get myself some more logs. And I'll uh, bring you back when, when I've had my fill of this nice rich ore. See you in a bit. Okay, just bring you back in for a moment here uh, to point something out. Um, when TFC is doing its world gen and it deposits the ores, it generally picks a you know central location for the ore body, and then within a radius of that, you know, scatters the ores at whatever density it has determined to scatter them. So 
overall the ore bodies are roughly spherically shaped. So with with a deposit like this that's near the surface, we know that we're right near the top of the ore body because it can't get up any higher. So what's probably going to happen is we'll dig down and we'll have this small area now where we see ore and as we go deeper it'll broaden out. And that's generally the best place to be to mine these ore bodies is at the very top because then you can expand out into the main body of it while well, you're always digging down and you have safe support above you. If you came in at the bottom of it, you can be continually digging up and having to, you know, <laughs> occasionally, like, you'd have to put supports above you in certain places that are then going to block your access to some ore that may be beyond that. So, so this is a really, really nice setup that we've got here. We've got rich ore. We've got a fair, quite a bit of it. I'm guessing this is a uh, very large deposit. We won't be able to know that for sure until we've made a uh, prospector's pick. And we're starting out at the start, at the top of the ore body. So this is like a really good mine for us. Okay, see you in a bit. <laughs> well, you can't see it very well from that angle, but this is actually an ore block right here. Oh, another one there. So this deposit extends out into the water. That can get a little sketchy, because, you know, once you're down below ground, you may not know where you are in relationship to the water, so you're following an ore body along. And uh, all of a sudden you get water pouring into your mine. That one there? No. Okay. So let's see if I can uh, get this guy out. Uh, yeah, one thing I didn't explain very well, I guess, about this, uh, uh, the gravity mechanic on dirt and gravel and sand, all the blocks that fall. They'll only fall if at least three sides of the block are free. So if I put one here, it won't fall in because there's a block adjacent here and a block adjacent there. Uh, I'm just talking about sides, not top and bottom. And so that does mean that if you've got a corner like this, you can still fill her up with dirt. No. But it's only when you're out in an unsupported area like this. Or can I find an example where you've only got one? Yeah, here. There's no ore there, right? There's only one side support there, so it'll still fall in. So. Okay. Um, I don't know how exciting it is going to be to watch me mine this out, but... Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah, you can see the different color in the water here. So this is fresh water here. So I can drink it. Cool. Oh, and I can refill my jug from it too. And then this out here is going to be salt water. Okay. Let's go get ourselves a bit more dirt. Save from here. And here. Okay. That's that one. Where was the other one? Oh, there's more of it over there. Anyway, okay, so this ore body is spread over quite an area, so I'll keep chasing the easiest bits of it for now. Okay, I think that's enough for now. Uh, as you can see, there's still a lot left, although most of it ended up being outside of the hill, so I ended up it ended up being mostly an open pit mine anyway. Just a little bit of it, a little bit of it, at least so far, is inside that hill and I even ended up <laughs> pushing back the uh, the ocean here a bit this was really a waste of time because it's a lot of work for very I didn't recover that much ore maybe 
six to ten pieces of ore. But it gets a little grindy just digging, digging, so every now and then I'd play with the seawall here just to uh, break things up a bit. If you have a look in my inventory, I have uh, two full stacks here, a half stack here, and then another full, four full stacks there. So, you know, each of these stacks of 16 is 560 units you know, of copper, so I've got over 3,000. That's going to be plenty for now. It felt like a wolf just, oh yeah, he just pushed me. Okay. So we're going to leave, I'll leave it at that for now and head back. And, uh, and we'll pick up from there when we get home. See you in a bit. Ah, home sweet home. Where I can slake my thirst. And refill my empty water jugs. And now the other thing I'm going to have to do is, I have a pretty much full inventory here, plus both of these vessels are filled up with stuff. So I think it's really time I built myself a few more chests and sorted things out. Uh, you've already seen me build a chest, so that won't be too exciting. And if you've ever watched other YouTube videos, you know how exciting watching someone reorganize their inventory is. So I'll bring you back when I'm done. Well, that's sorted. And if, you come over, if we come over here, we can see that our garden is slowly coming along. Get some of the weeds out. But I think that's about all we have time for today in this episode. So I hope you had fun. And I hope to see you back for the next one. Bye now.